Thank you very much. So the microfossils from the Wengan biota uh, contain a number of candidates for early animals. And they've been, these have been very controversial. And they've also generated a lot of excitement, uh, not least because of their age, uh, falling in this uh, critical interval of the Neoproterozoic, where molecular clocks uh, predict that animals were present, but from which fossil evidence of animals has been controversial. But as well as this, excitements also stem from the exquisite preservation of these fossils, which are uh, preserved down to a subcellular level. And these two papers describe this uh, using tomography, um, showing that we have both uh, these uh, small intracellular structures which have been interpreted as lipid vesicles or yolk droplets uh, and also these uh, large intracellular structures oh sorry the, these large intracellular structures or lysses which have been interpreted by some authors to be preserved nuclei however there have been a series of papers which have argued that these structures are not in fact nuclei and they've been uh, three main arguments which have been used to make this case. Uh, firstly, that nuclei have got an extremely limited preservation potential, so we might not expect to see them in the fossil record. Uh, secondly, that the structures are composed of diagenetic cements, and so they can't preserve the morphology of labile anatomy like nuclei. And finally, that the size of these structures is incompatible with, the, with this interpretation. The structures are too large during early, uh, early stages, and the cells of putative later stages are too small to contain uh, the same genetic information, or the same genetic material, rather. Uh, and so what we wanted to do was to uh, gather new data to assess these three arguments, and also, and ultimately, to uh, differentiate between competing uh, interpretations of these structures. So the first thing that I wanted to assess was the preservation potential of nuclei. And to do this, I did decay experiments. And the model that I chose was onions, because it's very easy to uh, image large numbers of nuclei using commonly available stains. And this let me track uh, the decay of these structures in different conditions. And to summarize, um, after a month, we could still uh, see the nuclei present in these cells and they survived at least another month but they became in increasingly difficult to image as the cells which contain them began to dis disaggregate and to disintegrate. So to try and understand what this means, the fact that these structures can survive in decay experiments for a month or two, we can compare that to other decay experiments on other groups uh, but which were carried out in similar conditions. And what we can see is that um, some structures, which we know are preserved in Lagerstatin, don't survive as long as this in decay. So it seems from, from the simple experiments that it's, nuclei can feasibly su uh, survive on a time scale which might be compatible with uh, preservation in the fossil record. So moving from taphonomy then to diagenesis, and particularly this argument that uh, these structures contain diagenetic cements, which occur relatively late, and so they can't um, replicate the morphology of uh, very labile structures like, like cell nuclei. So it's certainly true that these structures do contain um, diagenetic cements, especially in the outer parts of the structures. And they contain these uh, very, they, ha they exhibit these very classic void filling mineralization textures where you've got layers of crystals which are successively filling in spaces. However, in um, some uh, new specimens in our collections, they critically lack these uh, late stage void fills which allow us to uh, understand preservation in the absence of these and to test between different taphonomic models. So what we see in many of these speci specimens is simply a void, um, which is very regular in its shape. So it's often very close to spherical and often very close to the center of each of the cells of, the, of a specimen. Uh, another important thing to note is that these, are, these structures are surrounded 
by um, preserved cytoplasm which contains uh, intracellular structures. And so this suggests that whatever these structures are, they likely represent some, some part of the cell which is less susceptible to mineralization than the cytoplasm which surrounds it. Um, the exception to that is that some of them contain smaller structures within them, uh, which can be hollow, like in this example, uh, but in other cases they can be solid. And what we can then do is compare this to the more typically preserved specimens, which do have this void-filling mineralization. And what we basically see is exactly the same pattern. And the void, we can see that the void-filling mineralization uh, doesn't alter the morphology. It's merely filling in uh, these spaces. The next thing we wanted to do was to look at the size of these structures. So we used tomographic data, and we could measure both the volume of the cytoplasm and the volume of the structures which were contained within it. And when we plot all the data at once, uh, there's a lot of dispersion there, and it's likely a result that this uh, probably represents different taxa, multiple localities, and doubtless different um, diagenetic histories. So what can be more informative is to look at uh, individual specimens, and these can show evidence of, of division and uh, behaviors we'd expect with division. So this example is a, a specimen with six cells, which presumably represents a, a synchronous division of a four cell specimen. So we have uh, two large cells and these two four cells, which presumably have already divided, whereas these two are yet to divide. And what we see is that in the two larger cells, both the volume of both the uh, cytoplasm and the structures within it are approximately double those of these uh, remaining t uh, four cells, which exa is exactly what we would expect. Here's, a, here's a, another striking example. So this is a specimen which has seven cells. So six of them are small and one of them is considerably larger. Uh, and what we see is that all of the six small cells have one of these intracellular structures within them, whereas the larger cell has two. So presumably this reflects um, a state where the structures have already dis divided, but the cell is yet to divide. And again, we can plot this up, and uh, again, we see the, the, the pattern that we might expect. The, the larger cell is uh, double in volume from the, approximately from these uh, smaller cells, but the volume of the structures within them fall within the size range of those in the smaller cells. So, uh, so this uh, suggests evidence that the structures are divided uh, in concert with the cells which contain them. Okay, so how can we uh, interpret these structures? So the, the only real um, proposal which has been made uh, for, which doesn't in, involve preservation of a biological structure, is that these structures might represent um, so-called pseudonuclei, pseudonuclei, like these. So these are formed in preservation experiments um, by the shrinkage of the whole cellular contents. And these experiments were carried out on um, prokaryotic organisms, which obviously lack nuclei to start with. And as they closely resemble supposed nuclei from Precambrian fossils, this um, interpretation of a pseudonucleus has become the null hypothesis which authors wishing to um, describe fossilized nuclei need to be able to reject. And in the case of the Wengan fossils, uh, we can indeed reject this for a number of reasons, but most uh, importantly, these stru the structures are preserved within unshrunken cytoplasm with subcellular structures within that. So they can't themselves represent the shrunken cytoplasm. Uh, moreover, the consistency of these structures and uh, the evidence of division in concert with the cell are also um, inconsistent with this interpretation. So we also wanted to consider some biological interpretations. There are various aspects or structures within cells that we considered. 
But none of these, apart from the nucleus model, uh, can account for the number, the position, and again, the, the consistency, and finally, the, the evidence for, for division in uh, coordination with the cells which contain them. Finally, then, uh, the size of these structures is, is uh, entirely consistent with uh, preserved nuclei. So these, this is the specimen with the largest of these structures. They're about 150 microns in diameter. So this is well within the size range of living nuclei, which in extreme examples can be up to five millimeters long. And the, the patterns of division uh, are also what we, we see in um, dividing cells and nuclei. So the, this slide shows data from mice. The first thing is that um, in the early stages of division, we, get the, we see this pattern, which is the same as what we observe in, in the fossils, where during the early divisions, both uh, cell volume and nuclear volume approximately half at each division. And the other thing we can see is that um, over the first few divisions, we can see that by on, after only a few divisions, the, the cells are already uh, considerably smaller uh, than the nuclei of the, of the initial stages. And this, this can be more extreme. So, for example, in uh, early development of a frog, the, the, nucle the nuclei in the eggs can be up to half a millimeter in diameter, whereas the cells of the tadpole stage are only about 12 microns across. They still contain nuclei with the same uh, genetic material. And this is just because uh, the, the genetic material becomes more, ever more closely packed as, as development proceeds. So uh, to summarize then, it seems that all of the uh, objections which have been raised to these structures being nuclei uh, are now problematic in the light of, of uh, new data. And we consider that uh, nuclei are indeed the, the best interpretation of, of the data that we have available. Uh, the final point that I want to make is that in, in the case of these particular fossils, uh, the preservation of nuclei uh, doesn't have massive uh, implications for the phylogenetic affinities. I think probably most people would accept that they're eukaryotic. Um, but deeper into the Precambrian, a, a record of uh, fossilized nuclei could have profound implications. And indeed, there have been a lot of reports of nuclei from older deposits, but they've been rightly criticized because they're inadequately supported and they fail to reject this pseudo-nucleus interpretation. But perhaps in the light of a, of a uh, plausible fossil record of nuclei, it may be worth revisiting these, uh, these sites and uh, critically evaluating these, these uh, structures because a, a, a record of nuclei or of other organelles from this time could provide really key data uh, about the early evolution uh, of eukaryotes. And thank you very much. <laughs>